Hey, what's up guys? Jerlemans here once again and today we are talking about my specific builds for the Red Komodo 6K. So as you can see on here, um, I have the Tilter um, cage on there which I absolutely love. Um, I have customized it, so rubbed off some of the edges to give it that tactical look and um, I love it. This camera shoots 6K RAW, R3D RAW, and also um, it can shoot all the way down to 2K. Um, it does 40 frames per second in 6K and um, higher when you're stepping down in the resolution. So um, without further ado, this is the brain of the camera and this is how I start my build. So um, to start off with, I'll put on the back um, tilter V-mount plate. So this is my tilter V-mount plate. Unfortunately, um, I couldn't get the black version. It's somewhat very difficult to find and if I do find it, I'll definitely change this um, gray tactical one to the black one. So what it does is it converts this to NPF batteries to um, V-mount and in a very portable way. So that's it, that goes at the back just like that and it does not make the camera any bulkier. Um, it flashes very, very nicely on the top so as if it's actually made for the camera or made and came with the camera. And um, so after I've got that, eventually I'll put a V-lock plate on there and we'll get to that in a minute. So the next thing is, I've got this um, Canon variable ND filter adapter that allows me to put in my EF into the RF because the Red Komodo is made with RF mount and that makes it very, very versatile in regards to what lenses you can adapt on there. So. Um, this adapter here allows me to have ND on the camera and um, a lot of complaints with this adapter on the red Komodo where there is a play in there especially when you put on a heavier lens there is a little play in there and this is my solution so just grab a small piece of gaffer tape and or duct tape whichever in this case is duct tape and just stick it on the edge of the rim and then when you put it on you realize that it becomes very very firm very difficult to actually put on and that will stop the play completely so as you can see i'll have to force it there we go so that was the click right there and now it's completely secured on there there is no play whatsoever so that stops all the play from happening The next thing is the base plate. A lot of people have been asking me what base plate am I using. This is the original Tilter base plate for the Blackmagic cinema camera. I can't recall exactly what it's called, but this is the plate that I use. And fortunate enough, it's the exact same width and length for the Komodo. And they're very, very hard to come by. So if you do know someone that's got one that's lying around, you definitely want to grab it, have a look on eBay and see if you can find them. Um, I'm using the shorter dovetail, there are the longer ones which will allow you to actually move the camera back and forth to balance your tripod. So just to mount that on the plate and then we'll move on to the next thing. So I'm just going to mount that right here without removing this Arca Swiss plate that came with um, the tilter cage. This will give it a little bit of a riser so that it doesn't sit exactly flush on the plate. I prefer it that way instead of flattening it on the cage. And I am also using two screws to hold the plate together instead of one which is always recommended that way the plate doesn't shift
and there you go as you can see right here it fits very very perfectly at the bottom and with that riser just makes it a whole lot more beefier so right there and then I can slot in the bottom and tighten it so that's the plate the next thing is um, putting in a couple of rods um, these are very very short rods um, because I have um, the nucleus M that goes on there as well so I'll definitely need a rod and also to support the lens as well because I'm using the Zeiss Altus um, lenses So that is um, the rods on, um, as you can see I don't let them chew out straight through the back because obviously you would need a longer one and I don't want one that sticks out to the back because I don't want to put any V-mount plate on the rods because everything is attached to the camera. This way it gets a nicer cleaner look. So the next thing is my lens and for now this is my go-to lens the 55 mm Otis and um, this lens um, I've shot a short film with it um, the review is yet to come I know many people are looking forward to that review uh, just been busy so much with other things and stuff like that and I just got around to using it um, on that short film so if you haven't seen that film the link is right up here you might want to check it out and it was entirely shot on this 55mm, no alternative lens. And I can tell you already, just spoilers alert, um, this is an awesome lens. So this lens will always live on the camera. Um, as you can see, when I remove the lid, I have here an adapter step up ring. I don't know if you can see that, it will say tilter step up ring and uh, this ring is because i do put a matte box in front of it the tilter um mb the tilter micro or mini matte box whichever it's called i can't remember the model but all of these items will be linked below the description so if you're looking to grab one go ahead and use the affiliate links underneath the description so this lens will live on the camera 24 7. It makes the camera a bit bulkier, a bit more heavier, but it works perfectly because I love the look that this lens gives me. Oh, just quickly, and another thing as well, remember that the, cam the camera comes with an EF to RF adapter pre-installed with the kit when you purchase it so the cap is actually red but it only fits on the ef it does not fit on the main body which is rf now i've made some modifications very simple modification that this cap now fits on both the ef and when you remove the ef adapter it fit on the rf actually let me quickly show you so obviously this is the but it's the ef mount right here and i can just simply put it on there and lock it in place and it is on and also i can use the same cover on the rf and put it here and then quickly remove the adapter remember it's very snug because of the the duct tape that I've put on there which stops it from wiggling and playing so I'll put this aside and then we have that same adapter that will actually fit right here on the brain 
of the Komodo. So that um, cover fits on the RF and at the same time, just to, so you know that I'm not changing it right here, this is the EF2 RF adapter and that will sit right there. Yeah, so yes, there is a small modification that I've done. If you are interested, um, just give me a shout, comment below, and I'll show you exactly what I've done to this. Um, it takes literally two seconds to get it done, to get it actually fitting on both. So let's go back to putting the lens on. So that's my lens kit right there and as you can see I have also put a gear on the body of the lens so that I can put the Nucleus M on there. At the moment it's front heavy so let's counterbalance that with the FX Lion Nano. This is the 98 watt hour battery and this gets me approximately there and about between five to six hours constant on without recording. So there about five hours or so I get continuous recording 6K out of this battery. So that will go at the back here and boom right there we have balance. So already as you can see it's looking very very sleek, very nice setup. Now the next thing that I normally have on here is a magic arm. So this magic arm will hold my wireless transmitter. Um, I currently use the Holy Land Mars 400S and I love it. So that will attach on here at the bottom here and then it will fold down right here. and up and the wireless transmitter will be on there um, currently I can't attach it because I'm using that wireless transmitter at the same time to monitor the footage as I am recording so I can't attach that right now so the next thing is putting on the nucleus M so let's push this side here and um, this is the nucleus M wireless follow focus so that's the bag and I'm just going to bring out what I really need so this is the rod mount that actually allows you to attach it at the bottom or on the side and you can literally put it anywhere you want so this motor comes in a pair as you can see one for iris or zoom and then the other for focus or iris or zoom. You can also get a third one that you can actually attach to all of those three things. But I only use one. It's good that I only use one because in case of anything happens, I have a backup with the other unit. So let's put that on. Oh, just before I actually put that on, if you're not familiar with the wireless focus pulling, this is what it is, this is the main unit, the hand unit. This is what controls um, the iris and the focus and the zoom. So um, all of that can be done through here wirelessly without actually touching the camera. So this has not been put into any good use yet, but surely it will very soon. So let's attach this unit to that and then mount it on so i believe this is how i want it and i also want it on the operator side so which is my left so instead of having this led screen actually facing upwards i want it facing me so that i can um, gauge the information
So one thing that I find a little bit cumbersome with this particular setup is because of the size of the lens and then also the design of um, the Nucleus M um, rod mount or the clip or whichever you want to call it and um, it kind of the tightening knob actually sits right um, underneath the lens so it kind of takes a little time you can't just easily go ahead and dial it in that simply unless you put it at the bottom and putting it at the bottom that means the half of the the motor actually touches the floor so the camera is unstable so this is how I have put it together it sits right there so once that is done the next thing is to put on that mat box this mat box is the tilter one I'm talking about and is actually called the MBT15 a 5 inch monitor that's the size of this mat box and it's very light it does not add any weight to your system at all so that will just sit at the front and just tighten and that's it so that is a clip on mat box I don't have to put it through the rails if I don't want to obviously you can because it's got a little adapter here with some um, rail mount that you can attach to it and then mount on a rail but I prefer it this way so that it floats so this is the setup and it's ready to rock and as I said I would have put the magic arm on there and then you have the receiver um, right there the Holy Land Mars 400 right on the top and then there is another magic arm that I can actually put on a 5 inch monitor um, that monitor that I have adapted and converted to be able to um, use as a wireless director's monitor so also with this kit if you are interested I can show you how this is done very very simple very easily put together so this is my kit um, obviously it lives on the tripod or on the RS2 and um, it works awesome um, the RX2 struggles a very very little bit once I put on the motor but without the motor without the mat box it handles and balances it very very simple and very very easy so that's the kit and again everything on here is linked in the description below so feel free to comment um, if you want any more further information so that's it. If you're new to this channel, my name is Bruce Niamke. I do everything from reviews, unboxing, and tutorials on filmmaking. If you are new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and subscribe. If you are already an existing subscriber, don't forget to comment below, like, and share this content, and I'll catch you on the next one. Stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.